And so the time has come again to tell you about my gnome setup, and you need to read the room and pretend you care. Basically, the biggest difference since the last time is that I changed system fonts after three to four years. And I'm debuting them for first time. Wait and see. It's like you change a haircut. You might be the same, but you look different. Okay, let's do this. I'm still on Fedora, and most specifically on Fedora Rawhide. That's the development version of Fedora, but it doesn't look like a development edition at all. Um, I think the last three, three, four years, more people have joined Linux. Not many, maybe around five million or something. But many of them are developers and enthusiasts. So it really makes a difference, because they care, they open issues, they contribute. What I'm trying to say is that most likely every distro is quite solid these days. It's not a Fedora exclusive. What do you think? Have you noticed that too? Isn't your Linux much smoother lately? If you're using Debian, don't bother answering. You'll see the change somewhere in the next 90 years. But speaking for Fedora in particularly, I'm not exactly thrilled with the effort they put on the distro. For example, they're building DNF5 for more than two years, and it is super fast and cool and all those but it still misses some sub-commands and plugins that people were used to use. So in times you need to switch to DNF4, which has a different database in history, so the final experience is not always that good. But what's shockingly bad with Fedora is how slow their web pages are. For example, look what happens if I search on Coper for Cosmic Epoch. And by the way, that happens every time. It happens for years, and it pretty much happens in every Fedora page. I think someone's really cheaps out on servers, hmm? Oh, for the love of all things kawaii. It's 30k projects, not 30 billions. Finally. It took some time, but we're finally here. It maybe takes time and it's slow, but I also got to say that you'll find everything on Fedora nowadays. Even things that aren't available for Ubuntu. Also, the Cosmic Desktop works great in Fedora if you want to give it a try. And I may use Fedora, but I don't use GNOME from Fedora repos. Basically, I've cloned the full GNOME. Um, not the full full GNOME, but, you know, the core desktop modules like shell, settings, files, and those. And then I simply pull and build. And you know what else? That rarely will fail. Everything from main is super stable. And even if something goes wrong, we can easily revert with git. I believe the worst you'll face using this technique is unsupported extensions. However, some extensions developers, like Just Perfection, rebase upstream to support GNOME daily builds. Oh, and for the apps, whenever possible I use GNOME Nightly Flatpak Remote. So you see these lines on apps header bars, which frankly don't look cool when used daily, perhaps a GNOME should consider updating those graphics. Um, before the shell matter, I want to talk about the terminal I use. It's Tixis, and I'm not really happy with it. Not happy at all. I think I'll just wait for Ghosty to become open source, and then it's very likely that someone will create an Adwaita app out of it I can use. However, the standard Ghosty might also be okay to switch to. I haven't used it myself, only watched videos, but since it's already on GTK4, it should blend nicely with the rest of the GNOME desktop. Now, on the matter of shell, as you might know from a previous video, I recently switched from Z shell and power level 10k to fish and starship. The motivation was obviously the rewrite of Fish in Rust, but when I tried the Rust version, I got a little bit disappointed. I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but even auto-completion wasn't working. For now, I'll keep Fish. That by the way, I have modified it to behave almost identical to Z Shell, and I'll keep checking on Rust port. And if that won't go good, I'll switch back to Z Shell and keep looking for the next super awesome shell in Rust, because my next shell will be in Rust, no matter what. Oh, meanwhile, there is one more thing I recently changed, and most likely you won't really like it. So... I shamelessly added an OpenA integration to my shell. Before you judge, check this out. Remember when in the start of the video I complained about DNF5 missing the repository packages subcommand? Sin problema, jefe. Because I can ask how I can update my Fedora from a specific repository, and AI will translate that to a DNF command. Nice one, huh? By the way, the reason I need this is because Fedora Rawhide has branched out already on Fedora 42. So I have added Fedora 41 official repos only for updating the kernels from it. Pro tip if you ever switch to Rawhide. On Terminal, I'm using Fantask Sans with nerd patches plus the official me emojis. But the big news is that I changed the interface fonts. And so I switched from YouTube Sans 
That was one of the top questions of the channel, to Ginto. And I hope you keep asking what fonts I'm using. I can't say they were made for computer interfaces, and there are a couple of rendering issues, but I really, really like them. So I might keep them for a while. It has many families, so that's the one you have to pick. Maybe? Um, give me a few seconds to read you the official description, okay? So, Ginto font is a modern and minimalist font family with an elegant and trendy touch. London-based graphic designer Seb McLaughlin developed the font while researching sans-serif typefaces from the 20th century, focusing on the shift from strict modernist purity to the more Baroque, animated styles that emerged during the phototype setting period of the 50s and 60s. These two historic impulses have been remixed to create a dynamic and charismatic set of forms. Honestly, I didn't quite grasp everything, but it sounds awesome. Most importantly, they look amazing and refreshing. I really think you should give them a try. From extensions, I'm using Just Perfection to hide the top bar from desktop state and have it visible only on overview mode. Also, with Just Perfection, I've made the workspace's previews bigger and I've hidden the search input, so basically it takes the same space, even with bigger thumbnails. Obviously, I'm using Blur My Shell, but that's an extension I put and throw, depending the mood and the background. But the one extension I always keep together with the Just Perfection is Smile. Let me show you what it does. Super and Dot to launch the Smile app, and we can select all the emojis we want and the extension will hook them up directly on input. I'm not sure why this ain't a core GNOME feature already. Now from themes, I don't use anything third party. Everything is GNOME default. I even use the default mouse theme that I was usually changing, but since GNOME 47, Edweta cursor theme is pretty all right. The only thing I change is the accent color that I'm trying to match with wallpaper, and obviously I only use the dark theme. So, on shortcuts, I have four modified on navigation. I have disabled the application switch. And I actually have replaced it with the window switch. What that does is that alt tab will now only display and switch windows on the same workspace. Also, I've changed workspaces navigation shortcuts with control super and arrows instead of super and page up and down. Control alt and arrows still works, although I think it isn't that convenient, is it? Um, on Windows, I have two modifiers. First, I've replaced Alt F4 for closing a window with Super and Q, which is very handy, and I reckon you to also try it. And the other is that I've set Super and F11 to force applications in full screen. Even those that don't support it, like Blender, so I also recommend to try that. On custom shortcuts, I currently only have two. Super and Dot to open the emoji picker I showed you before and Super NT to open Tixus Terminal, that I hope soon will open Ghosty, and I will make it Super and G. Another change I made that it really is much more significant than it sounds is that I switched from Grid to List View, and there are two primary reasons for that. The first reason is that when we are on Grid and perform a search, the view will remain on Grid instead of swapping to List, which very often makes search meaningless. In fact, if I remember correctly, and I don't swear about that, I think the reason was for having a smooth transition between the view and the search, which is extremely poor reasoning, if true. I'm really not sure. The second reason is that the sorting UI in Grid is super annoying to do, plus there is not an indication in what shorting order you are in any given time. Well, not such problems on list view. However, I only changed that yesterday, and doing this video that requires lots of drag and drop, I'm not quite sure if I keep list as my main view, but it has certainly become an option for me. It never was before. Ever. So that's my gnome setup right now. Simple and minimalistic. I'm not even sure why it took me nine minutes to YouTube it. Maybe I just talk slowly? Anywho, see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>